Hey guys, it's Alex here from Homey. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the top 10 hidden features on Homey. So even if you've been a Homey user for a number of years now, these are features that you may not know about. Either they've come up in updates or, well, they're hidden a little bit away, so you need to know about them. Well, without further ado, let's dive into number one. And I'm gonna head to the Homey website, so homey.app. We're gonna take a look at our new app store. So I'm on our homepage, let's head to discover and let's browse our apps. Right away at the top, I should point out the first thing. Here you can switch or toggle between Homey and Homey Pro. So if I'm looking for specifically apps for Homey, I can toggle to that platform. And if I wanna search for apps for Homey Pro, I can toggle that. So if you're a Homey Bridge user or just a Homey app user, go ahead, use Homey. And if you're a Homey Pro user, go ahead, use that and search through all the apps available. The second tip I can give on this page is that you can use forward slash to quickly search for a brand or app that you're looking for. In this case, let's type in Ikea. Hit enter. And you'll see the Ikea apps available for Homey. Now, if I switch from Homey Pro to Homey, you'll see that one of these apps is only available on Homey Pro. So that's a great indicator if you're looking either to buy Homey, Homey Bridge or Homey Pro, sort of allows you to have a search through all the different apps that you may need for your smart home and make better decisions about what system you actually want. Now, another quick tip in the App Store, if you wanna see a selection of all the apps in one place and be able to filter them through different categories, you can tap on the search icon here on the left. Once you do that, you'll see a complete overview all of the apps available for either Homey or Homey Pro. And this will differ between what you have toggled and what you're looking for. And then you can also select categories of different apps that you might be searching for, along with maybe you're building your house based on Zigbee or Z-Wave, you can determine which technologies you're looking at. So let's say I want a lighting brand that works with Z-Wave devices and I'll get a overview of what apps are available on Homey for which brands. So for my second hidden feature, let's take a look at the IKEA Trad Free app page. Now, I wanna scroll down here and you'll see an overview of all the supported devices in that app. And if I scroll down further, you'll see a list of different flow cards that are also part of that app. Now, what you may not know the hidden feature here is that you can select one of the devices in the app. Let's say I want to take a look at the roller blind here. I'm going to select that device and it'll kind of scroll me down to the flow cards for that device. And then you'll see that I have a much smaller amount of flow cards here that are specific for those roller blinds. And this is a great way if you're shopping for a device or you have a device in home and you're looking to connect it to Homey, you can kind of quickly figure out what flow cards are associated with that device in that app, right? And with those flow cards, you can start getting some ideas about flows you could create for that device. So if you're looking to buy some roller blinds, you can select the type and see which flow cards are available for that device. Now you can do the same with any of these devices. So let's have a look at one of these dimmable bulbs. And you'll see that you can turn on, turn off, you know, all of the basic controls, and you can also dim these, but you cannot change the color or change the color temperature of those bulbs. So that shows you that if you want to do that, maybe you want to select a tunable bulb, in which case you have set a color temperature added to your flow card list. So this is a great little hidden feature for if you're looking at purchasing a new device for your smart home to figure out what kind of flows you can already create with it before you even purchase it and connect it up to Homey. Now for my third hidden feature, I wanna head over to the mobile app and I'm gonna show you a few things. So my third hidden feature is grid views for your favorite devices and your favorite flows. Now, if you don't know how to activate grid flows, let me show you. I'm in the Homey app. I'm just gonna head to favorite devices and tap on the setting icon on the right. Here you can select your favorite devices, but you can also change the view from row to grid. And if you change it to grid, you're presented with all of your favorite devices in one overview. Really handy in case you don't wanna scroll through to find the device you're looking to trigger, and you can quickly have access to them. Now you can do exactly the same for your favorite flows. Let's create a grid view for my flows. And you'll see again that these now populate in a grid orientation. 
Now, don't forget, you can also have your favorite flows as widgets on your mobile device for quick access to quickly trigger your favorite flows. And you can even add them to your Apple Watch if you want to. So you can trigger them on the go. So my fourth hidden feature is all about style. In this case, it's custom device icons. So if you didn't know already, you can actually change the device icon to better suit the device in your home. So for example, I have a smart plug here and the smart plug has a smart plug icon, but actually a light is plugged into that. So I actually want a light to represent the device. Now I can head into the device, head to settings, choose an icon, and then choose a icon that better suits my lamp. In this case, I've got a standing lamp plugged into the smart plug. So now you'll see that the device icon is updated. Now as an extra hint, don't forget, you can also tell Homey what's plugged in to a smart plug. This is really helpful if you're using flow cards that turn on or off a selection of device types. So let's say you're turning on all lights or off all lights. You can have these devices taken with in those flow cards if you tell Homey what's plugged in. So make sure you do that when you have a smart plug with a device plugged into it. Now my fifth hidden feature is to find out the devices and flows I have for one specific brand and one Homey app. If I head to more and I head to apps, you'll get an overview of all of the apps you have installed on Homey. Now, if I select one of those, for example, Sonos, I'll see that I have my film studio Sonos speaker connected to Homey, and I'll see that I make use of that speaker in a couple of flows. This is a really nice way of figuring out what devices I have connected to Homey, but also what flows I have running for those devices. Now I can add another hint to this. If you're looking for a device and its specific flows, you can actually go onto the device itself, head to the flow area, and then you'll see the list of flows for that device specifically. Whereas the app tells you all of the flows for that brand and that collection of connected devices, this will show you the flows for that specific device. And it's just a really nice way of organizing your flows, figuring out when you wanna tweak a flow for a certain device, which flows belong to that device. It's just a really nice organizational feature that you might not know about. For my sixth hidden feature, did you know that you can see the battery types and battery percentage of all the battery powered devices you have connected to your homey? And you can see that really easily just with a couple of clicks in the app. I'll show you how. In the energy overview, let's hit the battery icon in the top right. Here you'll see a list of all of the battery power devices you have, including the type and number of batteries they have and what percentage that device is at. This is really helpful for if you need to replace batteries of a device, you don't know exactly what battery goes in there. Well, Homey has that information. So we try and help you out and show you it. Now for my seventh hidden feature, this is all about tracking events and notifications happening in your smart home. And you probably know about our timeline, which is located underneath your favorite devices and favorite flows. But did you know that if you select a timeline notification, you can actually see the exact date and time that that notification triggered. Now you can do the same on certain devices. So let's head into my film studio lamp here, head to the device notification timeline, and then I can tap on any of these notification events, for instance, this one, and I'll see exactly when that event happened and who triggered it. So this is just a little hidden feature in case you didn't know about it, but you want that information, you can tap on it and see it. For hidden feature number eight, this is specifically for Homey Pro users. So I'm gonna head over to my Homey Pro and we're gonna take a look at some Homey experiments. So I'm gonna head into settings, head to experiments. Here you can actually turn on certain Homey experiments. These are, let's say, features we've thought about and we're perhaps looking at adding, but currently they're in experimental phases. But as a Homey Pro user, we trust that maybe you wanna make use of them. Bear in mind, there might be some issues or bugs or might not work exactly as planned, but at least you can try it out for yourself. And the experiment I want to show you is actually the power user one. So power user adds a number of unique flow cards that I can use that are a little bit more power user orientated. And it also tracks the performance and system profiling of Homey Pro in Insights. 
which is really nice if you're looking for certain performance data related to your Homey Pro, and you want to track that in Insights. So now that I have Power User enabled on my Homey Pro, let's have a quick look at some of the flow cards I get access to. In the when, under when cards, we have system events. And now I can track, for instance, when Homey has started or if an app has crashed. And I can create flows based on those events. In the then section, I can also have a look at the system and you can restart Homey. You can restart a specific app and you can enable and disable apps as well. Now, again, I'd advise you if you're not making use of this, don't activate power user, but specifically if you want to routinely restart Homey, also not really advised, but if you want to, sure, go ahead. You can use this feature in experiments and have it enabled to create your very own unique flows. So on to hidden feature number nine. In this case, we're gonna take a look at a flow card. And it's a flow card you might wanna use, but you maybe don't know about. Now, I've created two flows. One is my bedtime flow. And the trigger is basically when the flow has started to close some of my curtains, dim the lights, that kind of thing. Perfect for bedtime. Now, I've got another flow called heading to bed question mark. And you might be thinking, why are you adding a question mark to a flow? Well, let me show you. So the trigger for this is when my bedroom becomes active, I have an and condition that the time is between 7 p.m. and 1 a.m. in the morning. And then I have a push confirmation card. And this is something that's useful if you want a flow that you're basically notified when it triggers and the flow asks you, hey, do you want this flow to continue? Yes or no. And in this case, you can send yourself a custom text. So I have, as soon as that motion is detected, it's around bedtime, I get a push notification on my phone that asks me, heading to bed, shall I start your bedtime flow? And if I answer yes, then it will start that bedtime flow that I have set up. And if I hit no, then it won't start the bedtime flow. And you can use this for various things. So let's say you want to activate security at home or you have motion detected at home. Do you want an alarm to go off? These are all events that you may want the flow to continue or you may not, depending on certain things. And it gives you the power to basically control whether the flow that you've created continues or not. So let me show you what this looks like just by hitting test here. You'll see that I receive a push confirmation and here I can answer yes or no. If I actually select the notification myself, I'll be presented with the text and heading to bed, shall I start your bedtime flow? Sure. Now, number 10, last but not least, this is about basically enabling or disabling guest access when you want to. You're in control of this. So you can create flows that basically enable or disable a guest's or user's or manager's access to your homey. So for example, I've set up two flows, one to enable access for a certain user and then another to disable it. Let's take a quick look at the flows. So when the time is seven o'clock in the morning and the day is a Tuesday, then I enable Emma's access to my homey. So this is a great little tool in case you have someone coming over on specific days for certain times and you want to give them access during that time, but not the whole time. So for instance, a cleaner, they come one or two days in the week. You want to give them access on those days to, for instance, control the lights, open your smart lock, whatever you'd like to do with Homey. Then you can enable access and just as quickly using a different flow at 3 p.m. on Tuesdays, then I disable access for Emma. And it's really that simple. You can add enabling and disabling user access or guest access in a flow card. So make it a little bit hands-free. You don't have to go every Tuesday at a certain time, adding a certain person or enabling their access. Just attach it to a flow and let Homie do it for you. I've got a last little bonus hidden feature. And this has to do specifically for Android users. Now I switched over to an Android device and apologies for the flickering display on the device itself. It has to do with refresh rates and camera shutter speeds. I couldn't fix it, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. But did you know that you can actually send yourself a vibration-based Morse coded message using Omi Flows? And you might be wondering, okay, what kind of use cases is that? Well, 
one interesting one that I thought about is to basically attach it to someone coming home and being able to track what users come home when using Morse vibration in your pocket. So let's use someone came home. And in the then section, under push notifications, I can send a push Morse code. And you'll see this functionality only works on Android devices. So unfortunately, if you're an iPhone user like myself, you can't make use of it. But if someone in your family or you have a second device that's an Android device, you can try this out for yourself. Now you can pick a user to send the notification to. So let's pick myself. And here you can add in any text or number message you want that'll be translated into Morse code. In this case, because I'm tracking when someone comes home, I'm gonna use the name of that person. And that's gonna be sent in Morse to my mobile device. I'm gonna test the flow. Now you'll see that the test name being used here is John Doe, but if you're setting this up for yourself and you have different users in your home, you should be able to recognize the Morse coded message for that person's name. <laughs> and with time, you'll be able to recognize just from the vibrations in your pocket, who's coming home at that moment. So let's start the test. Now you might be able to hear it, I can feel it, but the phone is vibrating in Morse code, in this case, the tested name, so John Doe, but if we're using that tag properly, then it'll be the person who comes home at that time. Now you can use the Morse code message for anything you want. You can have a notification sent to you in Morse code that nobody knows about or send it to your significant other or partner or kids. It's up to you. But that's a pretty cool little hidden feature that you may want to make use of. Now that was my top 10 hidden features for Homey. And I'm sure there are a lot more that I haven't mentioned in this video. And some of them I might not even know about even though I've worked here for quite some time now. So. If you have some of your hidden features, I didn't cover them in this video, but you wanna share them with the community, share them with me, feel free to add them down in the comments below and I'll make sure to read every single one and pick out if there are some cool ones, maybe I'll make a follow-up video on this and include those there to show off to homie users. And while you're down there in the comment section, make sure to like the video and perhaps subscribe to our channel. And then I'll see you in the next video.